Heat losses through air leakage are one of the most common problems in older homes. In fact, it's not uncommon for a home that was built sometime in 20, 30, or 40 years ago to have one complete air exchange between inside and outside per hour. So that's a pretty significant energy load on a house. Today we're going to follow an energy reader through a blower door diagnostic on an older home and he's going to be able to show us how he identifies leakage points in a house. Well, we're here to complete a blower door test. We've got the heating system shut off. We've got all the doors and windows to the outside closed and all the interior doors open, so we're ready to depressurize the house. When we talk about depressurizing the house with this blower door, we're going to be forcing air out of the house equal to about a 25 mile an hour wind on all sides of the house. And as we send air out, we'll be able to pull air in from the different leaks and cracks and unsealed areas in the home. And here we go. You can see now oh, that yeah. this, the blanket is pulling itself in. Air is trying to come in the house as we're sending air out of the house. So right now we're pulling in air through whatever leaks are available other places too. As we go around and look for air leaks, if we feel air, it's coming from outside. We're not pulling air from room to room or from one portion of the house to the other. It's all coming from outside. So even if it's on an interior wall, that air is coming from outside somewhere. So now we're on our way to find some leaks. Right, and we're going to use a smoke gun. Typically, I use my hand. If you can feel air move across your hand, that's fine. But for demonstration, we also have a smoke gun. And the smoke will let us see where we go. We've got some can lights here in the bathroom. Now, can lights are typically definitely breaks in the vapor barrier, breaks in your thermal boundary where you've got this item that's pushed up into there, and these tend to leak a lot too. So it's rising up because of the heat from the light, and then it's hitting the air and getting blown down. We're kind of reversing what we typically see in a home. We're pulling air in from the ceiling where typically hot air is rising and heading out through the ceiling. The soffits like this one might be a typical area where you'd see the air leakage because it wasn't sealed years ago when they built the place. Correct. We don't really know without looking in the attic or taking parts of this apart how this was built. Is the vapor barrier going all the way across here at the roof line or does it stop here and then they tried to bring it down and over uh -huh. Or did they just leave a void in here and from above then we can get up there and look and air seal this whole soffit area that you can get to. But for starters we know we've got a problem. So We know we've got air leakage up there, yes. Okay. This is an interior outlet. We wonder why do we have air coming through this. And as you can see it's blowing, the air is being blown right into the house. The, this is an inside wall, but it acts as a chimney. There's penetrations here in the wall where the electrical is. There's gaps under the sheetrock here. There can be gaps at the top or at door frames. And so this becomes a chimney for warm air to rise up into this wall and head up into the attic at the top plate and then take warm air and moisture into the attic. And it's important to seal areas, mainly from the attic if you can get there, to stop that moisture from getting into the attic, causing mm. degradation to the material and frost build up in the attic. Oh, interesting, we do have some airflow. No, we don't, it just feels cool there. Where are we getting all our air from in here? Ah, there we go. So we've got our rim joist here, which is the floor joist is going across, covered on the bottom with any kind of material and on the top with your flooring. And we can see here where we've got a gap, we can feel some air movement in there along the rim joist. Now, this is a good indication of an area that we have air loss, we have air leakage, but without really tearing out part of the ceiling, you're not going to get to it and you're not going to be able to fix it. And it's a hard area to get to from the outside. So just because we can pinpoint the leaks doesn't mean in older homes we can always work on them. A lot of times people feel their biggest air leaks are, are, are around their windows. And this one actually has air leaks around it because of the framing and just the old style window. 
a lot of windows don't leak as much as people tend to think they will. They're better sealed, they close better, windows are cold, you can get drafts around windows just from convective loops. So the blower door is nice because it kind of pinpoints the areas to the homeowners to show them what is leaking and what isn't. You can really feel it coming through here. So here's another part of the rim joist uh, that is exposed. We've got cobwebs moving in the back there. Another uh, bad thing about this is it's also right near water pipes or boiler pipes. So it's a potential free zone there. And once you close these cabinet doors, it can isolate that area uh, even more. At least this is one spot you could at least get in there and do some air sealing and some insulating unlike what we saw earlier. So Good point. At least in this small area you yeah. can get it. And people say, well, I can't. It's only a small area. It's still worth doing. Yeah, that's, it all adds up. That's quite a bit coming in through there. Garages tend to have fewer leaking paths, but they have some large leaks, such as garage doors and heating systems. So let's go see what we have there. So here we've got an exterior door. And we can see the smoke is just kind of hanging around, even though that's a big crack. There we go right at the end. We've got some air leakage, but really that's not the problem in the garage. That's sealed pretty well. We have an electrical panel box here, which is again pathways leading to the attic where the top plates may or may not be sealed or the electrical outlets may or may not be sealed. And so we've got airflow through there. Yeah, I can just feel that air coming out of there. Other typical joints of uh, leakage can be around the, uh, the chimney stack. And you can see the air moving in there. Although it's really not as bad as we see in a lot of spots. There, there it is there. That's oh, where yeah, it's there you go. pouring in from here and needs to be properly sealed from either inside by dropping the ring. This ring won't drop. It needs to be sealed from outside uh, from the attic area. Somebody's actually been stuffing fiberglass in this door, probably because of huh. problems. Although the door itself isn't too bad. What's bad is the framing around the door where oh, the yeah. air pours right in. There's a saying that we use a lot today when we build houses and that is build tight and ventilate right. And as we saw in today's video, older homes tend to have a lot of air leakage points. Well, they're not tight and they're not ventilating right because they just have random unregulated air leakage. What we are trying to achieve is an indoor environment that is as airtight and well insulated as possible, separated from the outdoors. The theory is that the more you can control the indoor environment with mechanical ventilation that delivers just the right amount of fresh air to ensure that the occupants stay healthy and that you can control indoor humidity levels, the more energy and efficient and healthy your home will be.